Happy New Year. Tonight we're making Anne's spaghetti sauce. Anne is Mary Jane's mom, my mother-in-law, and she grew up in New Orleans um, with Mary Jane's grandmother and her family. And New Orleans has a great history of Italian food. And so the influences are definitely there for this amazing meat sauce, bolognese. Um, it's terrific tonight. It's fantastic tomorrow. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna package it up, put it in the fridge and let it sit overnight. We're actually gonna have dinner with it tomorrow night. But it works well as a base. I make a lasagna out of it and I uh, use ravioli or spaghetti or whatever. Um, kids love it, so it's super easy to feed to uh, hungry little kids. And it's just a fan favorite. So we are going to teach you how Anne makes her spaghetti sauce tonight with um, some ground chuck, celery, garlic, uh, rose, um, not rosemary, um, bay leaves, black pepper, a little flour to thicken the sauce, of course chopped onion, and then three kinds of tomatoes and some Italian seasoning. So watch how we put this together. It's very, very easy. Uh, it's not even very labor intensive. So Fun, fun one for just about any kind of meal that you want to make Italian spaghetti sauce for. So we're starting with two pounds of ground chuck. Um, this is really good quality meat we get from our local grocery store. Um, it's 80% uh, it's lean, so we're going to render the fat out of it, most of it. We're going to save a little bit of the fat behind to be able to cook the veg. But right now we're just going to brown it. We're not going to overcook it because, of course, it's going to get cooked again in the spaghetti sauce once we're um, uh, once we add the tomatoes and everything. So right now we just have the meat in there. We'll put a flame to it and start that browning. So what we're doing is we're just rendering this down. You don't want to scorch the meat. We're just trying to get it so that it's not pink anymore. And you'll notice that we've rendered out a lot of fat. We're gonna end up dumping all of that. And all I'm doing is just breaking up the big chunks and making sure that the pink parts get cooked. So just a few more minutes and we'll be done. All right, so we're brown and there's no pink left. So I'm just gonna shovel this into colander over here to drain the fat out and then we're going to take the remaining fat in the bottom of the pan and we're going to dump it all but a little bit say two to three tablespoons maybe maybe a tablespoon and just enough to brown the onion and celery that's coming up next so not much and then the other thing we're going to do is Periodically, while we're doing the veg, we're just going to smash the meat down to help drain more of that fat out of the meat because we just don't want, we don't want a lot of fat left when it goes into our mouths because it'll taste better. That's it. So the meat is resting over there, it's draining. And the next thing we're gonna do is prep the veg. For the garlic, I like to use a microplane. So all I'm gonna do on the garlic is just microplane it like this into a small bowl, or you can just, when the time comes, you can just microplane it right into the, uh, the pot. But this is that wonderful garlic, and I'll do all three cloves that way. For the celery, we're going to cut the ends off the celery and, uh, and then we're going to peel it. So I'm just taking a vegetable peeler and stripping the strings off the celery like that so that it just tastes better. It, it ends up being not as stringy and it cooks down better in the, um, in the pot when we get around to um, doing the vegetables. So I'll do that to all of the celery, and then I'm going to cut it up fine, like that. Any extra celery that you have can go into your uh, celery disposal unit. 
And then the last thing is the onion. So we're gonna take a whole onion and we're gonna chop it fine. So peel the onion. I like to leave the little flowery end on it. Because that kind of holds it together while I cut it. And then we're gonna we're gonna cut this very fine. And so I'll go through and do that for all of the onion. So when you see me throw it in the pot, I'll say the garlic, the celery, the onion, that's the prep we did on it. So the last prep step is to take the whole peeled tomatoes and pour them into a bowl. And now we're gonna crush them with our bare hands. These are little bombs of stain. So just be really careful when you crush them up that you don't just squeeze one wearing your best white blouse, shirt, whatever and end up wearing the tomatoes. So I'm just crushing each one up, getting it nice and broken up. And then uh, when it comes around to the adding the tomatoes part, this is the mix that we'll be adding along with the sauce and the uh, tomato, tomato paste. Okay, so we're back in our Dutch oven. We got a little bit of fat from the beef in here. And I'm gonna add the celery and onion and we're gonna sweat this down until it's, the veg is tender. Right, just, just over medium heat. You don't wanna go crazy with the heat at this point because we're just gonna let it sweat until the, the veg is just tender. We're not trying to brown it. All right, so our veg is cooked down. It's nice and tender, kind of translucent. The onions are translucent and the, um, Celery has started to change color. I'm going to add our garlic and just this is just going to go just until it's fragrant. I'm also going to add a couple pinches of salt. And we can always adjust the salt later, but right now I just want to have the garlic saute in with the rest of the veg. And once the garlic gets fragrant, like a minute or two, then we're going to move on to the to the flour and the tomatoes. So next up is the flour. This part, you just want to sprinkle it in. It doesn't take long. You do not want this to burn. We're just going to mix it to incorporate it. Get all the dry bits out. And this part doesn't take long at all. Now I'm going to add the tomato paste. And then stir that in. Ooh, it's smelling really good now. We got the garlic going. We got the smell of the tomatoes warming up. Okay, now that that's all incorporated, we're gonna add the tomato sauce. Our crushed tomatoes. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit and then just get all of that incorporated together. Okay so it's been about a minute. I've just gotten everything incorporated together. So we're going to go ahead and add the meat back in and just mix it up really well. 
Obviously it's really thick right now because we're going to add water to it in just a second. Okay, so now I'm going to add three cups of water and just keep mixing it. Get that all mixed up. And then I'm going to add our spices. There's the pepper the Italian spice and the two bay leaves. So this is just going to simmer and if it gets too thin, I'm sorry, if it gets too thick, we're going to add some water back to it because I reserve one cup of water in our pitcher here. And uh, we're just going to let that cook. You're probably going to want to taste it several times. It's way better tomorrow but taste it several times while it's cooking down as it starts to bubble. Um, it's probably gonna need more salt because there was like no salt in that meat. And, um, and just get the taste refined to where you like them. That's the beauty of doing this yourself is you get to pick just how you like your Italian meat sauce. So at this point, it's been cooking for about an hour and we just have it on a low simmer like this. It's still a little bit thick so I'm going to go ahead and add the last cup of water. So now we've done four cups total of water and we'll stir that in. Um, like I said, it's been cooking for about an hour and we'll probably let it go for another 30 minutes to an hour. We'll let you know when we get there. So this has been going for about 90 minutes now and uh, the, the consistency is perfect. And so now's the time to throw it over your pasta, or in our case, we're gonna let it cool down and then we're gonna let it spend the night in the fridge because tomorrow all the flavors will marry together and it's actually better. But, uh, but you could serve it now if you wanted to, just uh, pasta, ravioli, whatever, but we'll see you tomorrow when we actually eat it. So that's Camper. Uh, he's been with us for almost two years now. And let me tell you, he's awesome. He's a rescue. Um, and I absolutely love this dog. He's my constant companion. Um, as you know, we lost our beloved Ruby two years ago. And, uh, and Camper came into our lives and has just fell in right in lockstep with the way that we live. And it's been amazing. So um, it's the next day. We, uh, we reheated the pasta sauce. It's um, bubbling away here. We've got our, our uh, fettuccine in this case, or linguine in this case, all set to go. If you ever get to New Orleans, you should check out, I mean, check out the food for sure, but check out the Italian food, because although Mary Jane's family isn't Italian, there's a huge Italian influence on the food in New Orleans. And, um, I actually fell in love with Mary Jane at a place called Mandina's in Mid-City, and that place has been around for a long time. As a child, Mary Jane would um, eat spaghetti and meatballs while her family enjoyed the, uh, the amazing Creole food that they have, and traditional New Orleans food, uh, uh, Italian food, all kinds of stuff. It's so good. Oh, man, is it good. And it's a, it's a cool old restaurant. So... Pasta on the plate, sauce on the pasta. Now you could set some pasta aside, or set some sauce aside, and then work the pasta into it. That's a different way of serving it. I just like putting it right on top, just like that. And then uh, hit it with some Parmesan cheese, A little black pepper, slice of garlic bread like that, 
salad, and I think we've got dinner. So thank you, Anne, for such a wonderful, wonderful recipe, and uh, we love you all. Take care.